October uh, draft summary was distributed. Any comments or corrections? All in favor of approving? Aye. Any opposed? Summary is approved. Um, we, we put a little block of time right here just to uh, provide an update on the, uh, the town hall meeting that was uh, held last week. I know a lot of you attended. Anybody want to just give us a quick update? I heard it was pretty good. It went well. Any, any comments or feedback on, on how it went? Anybody from that sort of supporting committee want to, want to share anything about it? I thought it was great. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell her boss. <laughs> this was this was long in planning and coming. It was uh, worked uh, with uh, the congressman, congressperson's office, and Nikki uh, was there, and, and I heard it went, it went very well. Yeah, sure. And um, uh, go ahead. Um, well, it was a, for all of us in the CAG. It was a review of old information for the most part. Um, this is a summary of it. This is a marking going forward on the dredging. Uh, it was really good for us, I think, to meet the new uh, EPA region head, uh, who is very personal, who uh, I think really relates to people <coughs> as well. And I think that was a good, uh, for me, the best part of the being there for the meeting. You okay. could make that. You could realize that in one night. It took you a year to realize that. <laughs> 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 well, we haven't met him before. <laughs> but you know, the main purpose was to, to broaden the reach and, and let uh, give much broader access to people to learn about what was going on and get all that great history that CAG's been getting all along. So I think it was successful in this case. Louis? And I think it really brought out that a lot of the members of the general public don't quite understand what our limits are. And what we can do for them, or keep them informed, and where the city limits are. Yeah, and that's a big part of what the CAG's been working on. Is the role we can play to help improve communication to the broader community. So this was a big step in that, and we're going to keep moving forward to make our website as useful as it can be, just for basic information to the community, so people can come and know what's going on. So, so. now anything to add on that? Um, just a. A, a quick item. Um, I, I too think it was a great success. It was not that I don't love seeing all of your faces, but it was good to see a lot of new people, um, people who I don't think had ever come to a CAG meeting or had heard from us since you know the last public meeting that we had. Um, there was one issue that, that came up that the Christos and I were, were talking about, and that was with regard to the comments. Um, I think there was some question about how the, the questions that people submitted were going to be handled. I guess the, the question becomes, will the CAG be addressing them and then posting it on the web page, on your web page? Or um, you know, if, if they're technical questions, I guess you'd want EPA to handle them. So I think we need to kind of come up with a response on how we want to How were forward. those questions collected? So we have GCC on the questions on comment cards, and our plan was to give them to you to answer. Okay. So, so let, let me let me be clear about it. That uh, if you choose to answer, obviously you know it's your choice. So if if the CAC chooses to answer, uh, you have to put a disclaimer there that that is your opinion and uh, it has not been clear with the PA. So uh, that but was not the intention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So <laughs> if we get them, then okay. Okay. So we just wanted to make that that. We'll have a disclaimer on our answers as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gave. Uh, I, I didn't take anything with me. I think I, either I gave it to you or I, I have cards. Right. So, maybe yeah, right. Yeah, so we want to just make sure we get them all collected, right. get them to EPA, so we can move that right. process. Uh, I'll bring them next week. We can just I, scan them and, and email them to me. Perfect. Good. Good deal. All right. Uh, we have DEP here tonight to give us an update on the uh, CSO tanks. Um, a lot of you have been to a lot of meetings, I think, where this has been discussed, and we invite them to the CAG to give us an update here. I'll turn it over to Christos just for general updates prior to that. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, first, uh, about uh, the November, uh, November 16th event, uh, I, I think, uh, so I'm, I'm going to give you my perspective. I think it was. Uh, uh, a great outreach effort uh, by the CAG, uh, you know, the best ever, so to speak. And uh, 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 
kudos to uh, those who work hard for it, in particular the Outreach Committee, from, from me. Uh, the second thing I want to say is uh, you know, something pleasant. <laughs> we can all uh, use something pleasant. <laughs> something pleasant. So, you know, there's a. Uh, in, I think we had a, a jazz moment in here, and I'll explain. I'm a fan of jazz, and in jazz there's uh, this culinary uh, uh, call where one instrument uh, plays a few notes, a saxophone, let's say, and then another instrument, the drummer, you know, answers with uh, uh, his own beat. So, we had a jazz moment in here. Uh, in the last meeting, I, I challenged the community uh, to go out and perform their civic duty. We clean the, so we clean the canal, but it's up to you to, uh, to keep it clean. And so go out and save. And in particular, I put on the spot Brad. And he responded in, in grand fashion. Uh, he put uh, out there uh, these uh, flyers where it says exactly that. You know, there's days going on, do not pollute. So, thank you very much. We're up to <laughs> Although I have to say, the way I learned about it, uh, it was kind of uh, spooky. Uh, at, the end, at the end of the meeting, I think I was talking to the Congresswoman, Louis approached me in his usual way, you know, and he says, uh, <laughs> 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 And my gave me a piece of paper. <laughs> so I put it in my pocket, you know, to, to read it later. So I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, so let's let's keep up uh, the good work. Right. Uh, then, as uh, Doug said, uh, besides uh, the city, today tonight we have here also representatives from the state, uh, Scarlett from uh, the Department of Health, and uh, Aaron and Sally from uh, the Department of uh, Environmental Conservation of, uh, of the state. Uh, okay, <coughs> uh, now to the updates. Uh, the first update is uh, that we have received, just before the holidays, we received the 65% design for the upper part of the canal. Uh, and uh, we, will, we are reviewing it. Uh, so that's a, you know, a, a milestone that we have reached. So we have the 65% design for the cleanup of the uh, upper part of the canal. Uh, that is the good news. Uh, the, the other update that I have is that uh, we will not be starting the pilot study uh, in the beginning of December, as we had promised, uh, because uh, we hit some uh, unanticipated conditions uh, at the, first, uh, the fourth seed basin. Uh, and then the, the holidays came in. So there will be a delay. We will be starting in, uh, in January. Okay. And these are unanticipated conditions had to do with the installation of, uh, of the bulkheads. You know, we found obstructions uh, further in than we were expecting. Uh, and things like that, by the way, are going to happen. I mean, that's, that's why we have uh, uh, the pilot in order to find ways to respond uh, uh, or, or try to anticipate uh, issues when we go to the main, uh, the main canal. Uh, so these are the two updates. Uh, regarding our work uh, in the canal. We, all, all along we have been talking about uh, the work uh, that we do in, in the canal, uh, but in the background, you know, and you might have sensed that from my updates, we have been uh, meeting with uh, the city for their part of the design, okay? So we thought that it would be a good time to uh, have the city uh, present uh, the work that uh, they have done on the design of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, underground storage tanks, the so-called CSO tanks. Uh, remember, there's a, a design uh, for uh, uh, two options at the top of the canal. Uh, and the city will present uh, those designs. And then there's a design for uh, uh, the underground storage tank in the middle of the canal where the salt lot is right now, right across from, uh, from Whole Foods. Uh, for those who are not familiar, but I think everybody's familiar, the two options uh, have to do with uh, uh, the order of consent that we have uh, uh, signed with uh, the city and the order of, of, of consent for the design uh, of the tanks and construction of the tanks uh, sets a cutoff date 
April 2020, uh, and for uh, for a decision. Uh, on the part of EPA as to where the tank is going to go. So if uh, the city meets the stipulations of the order uh, by that time, meaning if the city is able to acquire or uh, uh, take uh, by eminent domain, uh, uh, New York City eminent domain, the, uh, the parcels that are involved in the upper canal with uh, the parcels that are involved uh, in the construction of the tank, uh, then they will proceed with, you know, in that fashion. Uh, in other words, they will construct, they will use the design that they are working on now, and they will construct the tank in those parcels that either they would have purchased or uh, would have taken via uh, the process of eminent domain. Uh, if that does not happen, if the city is not able to uh, 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 fulfill the requirements that the order sets, and there was a quest question in the last uh, uh, at the last meeting uh, whether we have to wait until April 2020. April uh, 20, 2020. Okay, the answer is uh, probably not, because we will have let's say if uh, uh, we will be assessing the situation, and, and if we assess that let's say in November 2019, okay, or December 2019, the city has not progressed now so as to uh, uh, have ownership of that site, uh, EPA might uh, proceed and uh, order the city to uh, uh, move with the alternative option, which is the tank <coughs> at uh, the location of the Thomas Green Park. The city, for, because of this situation, uh, the city, in accordance with the order, is designing uh, two tanks. One for the, the one next to the canal, and one for the uh, Thomas Green Park location. So, uh, having said that, uh, I will turn in, Kevin, are you gonna present? So, I will turn it to Kevin to make the presentation, and, uh, while he works there, I want to say that we are also working with the city for the design of the uh, excavation and restoration of the, the first street basin. Uh, that is, there used to be a basin next to where the powerhouse is right now. Between the powerhouse and, uh, and the property next to it, as you go towards the Carl Street Bridge. Uh, so the New York City uh, is working with us uh, towards completing that design. Right? And I believe uh, Kevin has, uh, you're going to present work on that also, yes. right? So, on the chat. you want to take a few questions? Uh, do you want to do the questions now? Or, yeah, I can take questions, but and, and let, you can take a few if questions. If they're not related to the CSOs, then I, I would, let's clear the decks on the other side. Okay. If there are no CSO related questions. If the CSO will wait. Oh. Andrea? Are we going to be able to see those five lines? Uh, the 65% the, the design, you mean for the canal? Yeah. Uh, so, let me, let me think about it. Uh, what I have seen from the 65% design, design requires a lot of work. So, uh, I would like to post the 65% design uh, at the time that uh, the EPA has reviewed it, and, uh, and the uh, design group of the CFPs have uh, adapted, uh, yes, have uh, incorporated our comments. Okay, so at that time, yes, you will see. Right. Any, any other general questions? Yeah. Uh, Christoph, uh, as far as the historical site that's being declared or in the process of being declared, isn't that going to change the design of the tanks? You mean the, uh, on the building the on, the, on, uh, on the Butler and Navin? Navin? Yes. Uh, okay. So it's a, it's a little complicated. Uh, so if if uh, uh, let's say the process works out uh, and the city uh, has 
uh, and the city has to construct the tank uh, in those three properties, uh, two properties, uh, also using the adjacent property as a staging area. Uh, if that happens, uh, then that site becomes part of the Superfund. Okay? And it has to be, uh, uh, so it, it has to follow uh, the requirements of the Superfund law. That is, I weigh in with my team. Okay? Uh, so, if, on the other hand, let's say if that doesn't work, if that process does not work, and they have, the city has to do uh, the construction of the tank uh, at the park, uh, uh, the city has no say. I'm sorry, uh, the government, the federal government has no say in that. Okay? So, let's take then the first, uh, uh, you know, the first possibility. Let's say that the city uh, fulfills, fulfills all its uh, obligations according to you know, that are laid out in the order. The, order of consent to DPA and uh, is required to uh, and, and, and has to build the tank in there. Okay? So what happens to this building? Uh, they will have to get direction from EPA. Okay? And so what we're doing right now, so right now myself as, as a project manager, I'm working towards that. Uh, we are evaluating the information, so we have gotten information from the, the state agencies, and uh, we have asked for the city to give us uh, information in writing from landmarks, city landmarks. Uh, that information will, uh, will be reviewed by myself and by the uh, archaeologist, you know, the, the specialist, job to do exactly that. Uh, and then, in a, a couple months from now, I mean, we expect to get that Landmark, uh, city landmark, landmark information soon. So uh, in, in a few months, a couple of months or so, we will uh, make a determination whether that building uh, is uh, of historic out value according to the Superfund law, you know, having collected all that information. And then uh, if we do that, then the building will have to stay there, OK? Uh, they will have to stay there, and which, of course, is going to increase the cost of, uh, of building the tank because uh, it will take a lot of shoring to, you know, to, uh, to support the building while uh, excavation happens right next to it. Uh, so that's a possibility. If, on the other hand, uh, the archaeologist and uh, let, let me let me be clear about it. We already have. A letter from uh, Shippo, the, the state, uh, and they are uh, in support of uh, preserving the building. Okay. Uh, so, if our review of that process uh, proves that the building, the building is not of historical value, and we are not required, according to Superfund, to, to maintain it, then uh, that the city can, you know, can go ahead and demolish it. Right, so these are the two the two extremes. In between, I believe even if the city continues uh, uh, going with the option of putting the tank in there, uh, there is uh, you know there, there could be other ways uh, that uh, uh, you know there are ways of preserving whatever is, is, is historical from that building. Let's say the facade of the Pedro, for example. Okay, so I described the extremes, but there could be also Many solutions, right? But again, all this, in all this, we are involved for as long as uh, the option of building the tank in the canal materializes. Right? Okay? If it does not materialize and the city has to build the, the tank at the, uh, the park, uh, EPA has no say. Right? He told you it was complicated. Um, okay, let, at this point, let's, let's go on. Let's yeah. let Kevin do his presentation, and then we'll capture all questions okay, afterward. No. Yeah. So if you have more questions for Chris. All right. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Chris. Good evening, folks. I'm Kevin Clark. Uh, I know uh, most of you have seen me here before. Um, so we'll just run through a presentation on the status of uh, the design of the tanks, as well as uh, some of the other processes that are that the city is uh, pursuing um, to support the, the tank design. Um, we always kind of start with this slide here, which is just an aerial view of the two locations. 
Um, RH-34 is the largest outfall uh, at the head end of the Gowanus Canal, and uh, OH-007 is the second largest. Those are the two, the two outfalls um, we're looking to uh, abate CSO discharges from. Um, we're currently pursuing uh, the design of uh, a tank at the head end facility, that's uh, the parcel six and seven, directly adjacent to the canal as well as the alternative site at the park and um, selected um, sanitation uh, salt lot for the OH-007 site. Um, Christos briefly talked about some interior milestones that we agreed to, that the city agreed to in um, the settle, settlement agreement that was finalized uh, with EPA um, in the spring of last year. And so I just wanted to review all of those um, with you and, 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 and uh, um, some that have been completed already. So uh, some of so the milestones, uh, each of them are listed here, uh, commenced the environmental impact statement. Uh, that was April 1st of 2016. We did kick that off in, in April of 2016. Um, the next one was issued a draft EIS and certified into ULER. ULER is the Uniform Land Use Review Procedure um, that the city must uh, follow for any time we select a property or want to acquire a property or both for, uh, um, for this type of facility or any facility, basically. That was October 1st, 2017, and we completed that as well. That happened in September. Um, the next uh, uh, milestone is complete ULERP. Um, we need to do that by May 1st of 2018. That's uh, next spring. Um, we are currently on target to do that. And I have some more slides uh, to show um, where we are in that process right now uh, coming up. Um, it is the city's intention to uh, pursue acquisition of these privately owned properties through a willing seller, willing buyer um, arrangement. That is the city's preferred approach at this point. It always has been. Um, however, if we're not able to uh, negotiate um, an agreement for the sale of those properties, we will have to pursue and in the domain. Um, so in the order, uh, there is uh, a milestone for filing the petition to condemn, which is one of the first steps in the eminent domain uh, procedure. Uh, shortly after completing the ULERP in June 16th, uh, in June of next year, June 16th of 2018. And then we have uh, two years to acquire the title to that property using the eminent domain process, um, which uh, brings us to April of uh, 2020. If we are able to acquire the property using a, you know, through a willing <coughs> seller, willing buyer um, type of arrangement, we do expect um, to acquire that property um, sooner than that, maybe you know, maybe about a year earlier, potentially. The properties, properties, right? So there's more than one owner <coughs> involved in there. Um, and then there are several design milestones. Um, we, uh, you may have, you may recall um, from previous previous presentations that we have broken up the design and the construction into uh, several phases, um, and there are three phases. Um, we call them construction packages one, two, and three. Construction package one um, is the de demolition and site prep um, contract where we prepare the sites for future construction. So that's demolition of the existing structures, uh, decommissioning uh, the existing utilities, that sort of thing. Um, we were required to submit the design for construction package one to EPA in June of 2017, and we did do that. Um, I, I, you know, we are aware that um, the preservation of the building at 234 Butler Street um, is, a, is, is a priority for the um, for some folks in the neighborhood, and um, that is something that, ha that has come up very recently, um, and way after we had advanced the design. Um, but I do want to make it clear that in construct in that package, we had always assumed that we would be preserving the pediment atop uh, 234 Butler Street. So that's in already included in the package that was submitted to EPA in June. Um, construction package two is the large scale excavation um, and, and um, a process, a structural process that we call the supportive excavation, installing of the supportive excavation, and then um, removing um, all of that material um, and any remediation that would be required to build this basically a big bathtub um, for the tank. That's construction package two. That design is due to EPA in April of uh, 2019. Um, that's in progress. And then uh, construction package three, uh, that's um, uh, the uh, construction of the superstructure. 
and all of the mechanical and electrical fit out of the facility, the pumps, the piping, the fire alarm system, all of the electrical, uh, electromechanical um, equipment. Um, that is due to EPA in September of 2019. That's also in progress. Um, and then uh, the first uh, construction milestone is issue NTP for construction package one, and that is tied to the acquisition of um, the properties. Uh, so not later than five months after acquisition, or no later than May 1st, 2020. Yeah, before you go, so in this schedule, everything except for this acquired title, everything else is in parallel for both locations, <laughs> and then and the parking, okay? Yeah. Well, on the designs, but not the yield. The designs, yeah. Uh, so again, I briefly touched on the CP on construction package one, on the overview. So. Um, again, it includes the demolition of the existing structures, disconnection of utilities, and establishment of a new construction perimeter fence. Um, and there's a lot of work went into that package. Um, we spent a lot of time on uh, those properties uh, conducting pre-demolition um, surveys, um, evaluating the condition of the existing buildings, uh, mapping the utilities um, uh, that, that would need to be um, uh, disconnected. Um, and then some other internal processes that we call constructability and bidability uh, reviews, and we submitted that design to EPA in June, and we are currently pursuing procurement of that um, uh, construction package um, in, uh, the, because we need to have that, that construction contract in place um, by the time that we acquire the property. And so if we were to acquire the property through a willing seller, willing buyer transaction, we need to start that now. <coughs> Um, just to provide an update on the pre-design investigation work, um, you may or may not have noticed um, we uh, have had a pretty significant uh, presence out on parcels uh, 6, 7, uh, and the park, and uh, the 007 site, um, conducting a lot of work, uh, mostly soil and groundwater sampling, um, doing some coring, uh, uh, geotechnical uh, um, uh, borings and uh, cone penetration tests. Uh, the, the, those uh, You may have seen like drilling type rigs out there. That's the work um, that we were doing there. Um, and we do have, and we have pre prepared some preliminary reports uh, based on the data received from uh, those investigations. Um, design update, I, I'm gonna touch on this a little bit again um, in, in, in a little bit, but um, each of those construction packages I mentioned earlier, there's several steps that get to a complete design um, and uh, these are pretty, pretty standard um, project delivery um, uh, procedures. Um, the first is the development of a facility plan. So that's basically a conceptual um, a description of, of the type of facility you're gonna uh, construct. So we prepared those in May 2017. Um, and then you get into some more detail about what the facility um, is gonna look like. And you might have some design data on things like pumps and piping and the size and, size and horsepower of, of uh, equipment like ventilation and boilers and that sort of thing. And um, we wrapped up uh, those reports, which are called the basis of design reports in October of 2017. We just got them signed internally. So we have some internal stakeholders, basically the, our operational group um, that is going to own and operate uh, this facility, signed off on those uh, just a couple days ago, and we transmitted those to EPA just yesterday. So I doubt this is red. Um, I think yeah, each, each, yeah, <laughs> each report is about 700 pages, so that's pretty good. 30% <laughs> um, design uh, is in progress. Um, we're looking at something mid next year to complete um, the 30% design. And then, as I mentioned, uh, design completion fall of 2019 and construction package. Construction packages two and three are very closely um, integrated. Um, so we just use the, load, the later date there, fall 2019. Seeker and ULER status. So uh, Seeker stands for City Environmental Quality um, Review, and ULER, I mentioned earlier, is a uniform land use review procedure that we must follow when we are going to um, when we select uh, or acquire a new property. Or, uh, for a new facility. Um, so, seeker is basically the assessment and disclosure of the potential adverse significant 
uh, environmental impacts from the construction and operation of, of, uh, of the CSO facilities. Um, we did issue the draft scope of work in April of this year. Uh, we held a public meeting to receive comments on that uh, draft scope of work in May 2017. <coughs> and we issued a draft EIS and the final scope of work in September 2017 um, as required in order to certify it to, to ULERP. And that fi the final EIS is in progress. Um, there is a, a website here. I know you can't read it here, but if you just go to the city's a website uh, which is nyc.gov backslash DEP and search for Gowanus. It'll bring you to the uh, to the to the Gowanus webpage where you can um, read the uh, the draft environmental impact statement and, and there's um, some instructions there for submitting comments if, uh, if you'd like to do so. Uniform land use review procedure. Uh, so we certify our application um, with the Department of City Planning in September of 2017. Um, and we, we are, we believe we, that we are on, on target for completing that in April 2018, which is consistent with uh, the milestone that's in the order. Um, I, we did also want to just briefly mention that there is a separate ULERP um, that we are pursuing for demapping an existing, uh, it's Douglas Street between Nevin Street and the canal. Um, it's not really necessary for, uh, for us to construct the facility, but it's basically just to clean up the city map. It's never been used as, a, as an actual street, but it's shown as a street on, on the map. Um, so here we certified um, into review. We held a community board hearing just a couple weeks ago. Uh, we had the borough, uh, borough president's office um, hearing was last night. So the next step is the city planning commission and then on to the city council. <coughs> Uh, we also wanted to mention um, there's, there's another significant process that um, any city agency must follow when constructing a new facility or making uh, um, modifications to any above ground features of an existing facility, and that is, uh, the, is meeting and getting obtaining approval from the Public Design Commission. So um, they uh, um, they have jurisdiction over any <coughs> structures, parks, open spaces, streetscapes, signage and are proposed on or over uh, any city-owned property. That even includes fences, believe it or not. Um, so we did have a conceptual review meeting with uh, the Public Design um, Commission uh, back in August. And we are going to be going back in a couple of months. Uh, I can't remember if it's late December or, or early next year. Um, and, then there, and then you continue to meet with the Public Design Commission as the design progresses. Um, so there would be a preliminary review um, with the design commission at the, you know, somewhere between the 30 and 60 percent design mark, and so that would be uh, mid 2018, uh, next year sometime. Final review at the 90 90 percent design, um, which would be likely in the spring of 2019, and then um, you actually you have to implement the design as they approved it, and then provide proof that it looks like the way that you described it to them um, with, with photographs and, and other documentation and that's where you get your final sign off from the uh, Public Design Commission. Um, before I, 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 I shared some slides on, uh, on the design of the facility, I just wanted to kind of briefly run through a couple slides just to remind it, you may, you may or may not uh, recall some of these slides on, on how we intend to construct this facility or, or operate the facility. So I wanted to briefly um, review this. So um, normally uh, during a wet weather event, I mean this is a very sim simplistic uh, um, uh, uh, diagram of, of the sewers and, and, and the CSO facility, so please bear with me. But anyway, during wet weather, um, when uh, the capacity of the sewers uh, are exceeded, and uh, an overflow is going to occur, um, the CSO is relieved um, into the nearest water body, in this case it's Gowanus Canal. We plan to construct the CSO facility, a CSO tank, to intercept that flow from the canal. And um, what would happen is uh, water is diverted into the facility. That will um, happen pretty much automatically um, by the setting of weirs um, uh, for the head-end facility. Uh, you know, that, that's the way it currently works now. Flow comes into uh, the facility and 
um, uh, flows towards the Gowanus pumping station, and during a wet weather event, um, the flow in the sewers just starts to rise so over time as, as, as it receives more and more flow. And then at a certain point, um, it overflows a, a, a weir and then into the canal. That's going to be similar to how, how we're going to control the flow into this facility. Um, as the water begins to rise, it's going to overflow a weir and then, and then automatically be diverted into the CSO facility. Um, the first step in uh, that process is screening. So that flow would basically um, run through um, what we call bar screens. And these are basically um, vertical bars that would remove any solid material that's larger than half an inch. And then there's a, um, there's a rake that actually comes and then collects that material, lifts it up to the surface, and dumps it into a container so that it would be uh, um, um, removed at a, at a later time. And then flow starts to uh, flow into the, into the tanks. And uh, this is going to happen in a sequential type fashion. Um, and not all going to fill um, together. And um, you know the amount of flow or the amount, the volume that's captured in the tank is going to vary with every storm. Um, in some storms, most storms actually, you might only fill one or two cells. Um, and then there are a couple of storms where it's going to exceed the capacity of the tank and flow through the flow out through the, into the canal. It's still going to result in an overflow. But what's nice about a flow through type design is that you're still going to get some treatment of of that of that flow that does discharge. Um, and that treatment is you're removing uh, some solid, any solid material, any trash that's in, in that flow um, through the screens. You're also going to get some settling um, of any heavy uh, material that, that, that could be in that flow. The settling would occur in the tanks. Um, the next step in the, in the process is we start to dewater the tank. Um, and actually the way that we have designed the facility that dewatering is going to happen um, pretty much uh, right away. Um, and that, that dewatering is going to send the flow, send, send the, the stored flow in the, in the tank through uh, degritters. These are cyclone degritters that are very commonly used in wastewater treatment plants. We have them in all of our wastewater treatment plants. And basically what you're looking to do is to remove the heavy uh, inorganic material that's um, you know, grit, sand, uh, pebbles, that sort of thing. Um, and the reason we're doing that is, you know, we've learned from uh, the design of some of our other CSO facilities wherein it becomes very difficult. Uh, first of all, it becomes difficult um, to, to move that material out of the facility, uh, but what's happened in some other places is if we are able to move it out of the facility, we just end up depositing it in the sewer. And so in this case, what we're looking to do, since we've already sequestered it in the tank, we want to remove it using this degrading process. Um, so the degrading process will remove this heavy material um, from the flow, uh, collect it in, uh, in a dumpster, and then that, the, dump, uh, the dumpster would be collected and the material deposited in the landfill. Um, this is, again, a very simplistic diagram. Um, there are you know, many other uh, components to this building. You know, in, in this slide, we're calling it the secondary support program. It's things like um, heating, uh, control equipment, a control room, bathroom, that sort of thing. Um, and then uh, probably one of the most important components of the facility is odor control. Um, you know, we've always been talking about uh, Odor control, um, it's always been part of the program as far as the city's concerned. Um, the odor control system will be operating 24-7, um, uh, 365 days a year, similar to what we do at our other facilities. Um, and uh, so, anyway. Uh, so here's um, the current uh, design of the um, head end site uh, tank. Um, what we call RH3, uh, the head end site. Um, in, in plan view, and I realize it might be a little bit difficult for some of you folks to see, but I'll do my best to describe it. And if, if we need to chat about it afterwards, we can do so. But um, the, the, the canal is, is right here. Um, not all of it is shown. Uh, the Gowanus pumping station is here. Um, flow comes into uh, the regulating structure here. And during wet weather, it would overflow into the facility. These are the screens right here. 
um, and then flow would come around and start filling the cells um, sequentially. Can I, can I of course. Uh, just a clarification <laughs> for uh, what uh, Kevin showed before was what we call a section view, a simplified <coughs> section view. So it was as though you were looking at the tank uh, from, from its side. Okay. Standing on its side. Good this one is what we call a plan view, and it's like you're looking at the same tank that you saw before, but you're example. looking like from, let's say, a helicopter or something, right? So it's a, from the top, right? So that's what you're seeing now, looking at the tank, at the tank from the top. Thank you. So um, flow would come in through the screens and then start filling the tanks uh, sequentially. And then for those events that would um, exceed the capacity of the tank, um, the flow would overflow at the end of the tank and then out into the canal. Um, and then uh, as you know, once the storm subsides, we can start our dewatering pumps, which are located right here. That would start to drain um, the facility. And then there's a flushing type of, uh, there's a flushing system that would be installed that actually washes each of the cells. There are reservoirs here. Um, that would then be opened up and they wash uh, the cells out one at a time and stop pushing any of that solid material uh, that would be collected in the tank. And some of that would be organic and inorganic material and push that towards the wet well um, so that um, uh, the tank uh, would be clean and ready for uh, the next wet weather event. Um, uh, don't really have another view of this right now, but it's still the intention um, to maintain a 50-foot setback from the canal, and we are working on designs of a promenade um, that would be located, you know, adjacent to the canal, and um, the superstructure is roughly going to take up um, this area here, but the remainder of of the site we are looking to uh, provide some open space. Um, it will all be passive recreation. Um, we're working with the Department of Parks and Recreation on uh, those designs. Um, it is the intention that the Department of Parks and Recreation would um, operate and maintain that, that public space once the facility is completed. Can you have those images that you presented to the Design Commission that you can see? Uh, we can, uh, you know. The elevation and the street side? And there's about the, uh, previously submitted to the PDC. Uh, yeah. So we could share them some other time if you want. Yeah, they they had uh, actually uh, they had the presentation uh, a slide of what you saw, but I didn't think that it was uh, it was really conceptual, so it's not design. And it gives a sense of the massing. A sense of what? The massing. The mass. How big is it? Yeah. The, the, okay. So that's what I'm saying is I did not think. Okay. Let let me clarify that. We are still in talks about the design. EPA has not approved any of this, right? I mean, there are issues. I mean, w w but that's not the point. Uh, the point of this presentation. So the di this is not finalized. And so when we go to the building, okay, uh, to be truthful, I what I saw there, uh, conceptually shown, did not represent what my concept of, of that was. Okay, EPA's concept. So we thought, it, you know, it, it would not be the right forum to, uh, to present it. But as the design advances, they will be back, and, and they will present to you the, you know, when we have really, not conceptual, but uh, actual uh, uh, sizes. Um, is uh, the Parks Department involved <coughs> in that, but um, it's not going to be considered park space right. because it's, it's DEP space. That's right. That's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. So, right. So the top of the tank would still be, uh, you know, technically owned by uh, the DEP. It would not become deeded parkland uh, because uh, there will be occasions where the city would have to come back and uh, access the below ground portions of the tank from that 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 space above ground. So um, that is something that you know we're still coordinating. Um, the design on so that we always maintain access to those to those hatches and, and, and other entrance ways. Um, one other thing that I wanted to, to just show here, um, I, I did go back to the to the head end site. Um, this this layout might be a little bit different from what um, you guys may have previously seen or, or, or remember in that 
Um, we're taking up more of the site now. We uh, expanded the, uh, the footprint, and what that does is helps us to reduce the depth of excavation that's required in the tank. It also makes it easier to operate um, the tank um, in that uh, the, the maintenance activities that, would, that, I, that, I, that I just mentioned, um, um, it makes those a lot easier. So we're taking up more of the site, which I think is also a good thing because then there's more excavation of any potential um, uh, uh, contaminated material that would be um, closer to the surface. So this design is a, a longer tank, but shallow. Right. It goes from my way. So it's this whole question till the end. So yeah. we'll get them all. It's, yeah. it's basically the whole site, <laughs> except for that 50 foot setback. So you mean both? Uh, both, both questions. Yes. Yes. So you know, this is Butler Street. Um, uh, this is this is Douglas and, and uh, this is the Cross Street right here. So what you are saying, uh, there are two parts, uh, three parcels actually that are in question. Uh, the one, the most the, the, at the south, uh, is intended to be used as a, uh, a staging area. That's right. So it's uh, uh, the tank. What he's saying is that this design of the tank, the shallow and long tank, will practically take uh, the entire two top parcels. Okay. Conception. Yeah. The city's not planning to acquire that parcel uh, on a permanent basis, just lease it on a temporary basis to support the construction. Um, park site, um, uh, different, so it, it, it's a very similar layout, although you'll see that you know the influent and effluent conduits are laid out a little bit differently. <laughs> um, so the canal is over here. Um, flow from the RH34 regulator um, would be coming in from um, uh, from Nevin Street onto Douglas and into the facility, and then flow through the screens, go through each of the cells, and then out the effluent channel uh, down to Broad Street um, to the canal. Um, but here we took a, a different approach to the approach at RH3, and then we went for as compact. Of a, of a footprint as possible as to, minim as to try and minimize the impact on how much parkland would be taken, taken away. Um, so, um, so it would be shorter and deeper right? Yeah, at the, if constructed at the park. Exactly. So, uh, similar, similarly, we're still you know, we're coordinating with the parks department um, on uh, the layout of uh, the parks facilities that would be um, placed on top of the tank uh, following construction, you know, and that we have every intention as part of that design, and we are coordinating with them on, on this and, and providing, you know, a pool and the, the pool support facilities, the locker rooms, the bathrooms, that sort of thing. At the Owl's Head site, <clears throat> Uh, we've gone through several iterations of, uh, of the design there, but in the end, what we currently are proposing is uh, a very unconventional uh, design it's in that um, we have uh, designed the tank to fit entirely on the uh, oddly shaped, triangular shaped um, uh, sanitation property. Um, oh, sorry. Yes, plan view. Yes, I'll, I'll, so I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So, yeah, why don't I do that now, right? So, this is uh, the Gowanus Canal. Um, this is uh, Fifth Street, which is privately owned, but it is shown on a map, and there are some signs there. Uh, and this is Second Avenue. Um, and so, uh, we did come up with a design that worked, and we decided to pursue this design because it's city-owned property, and what it allowed us to do was to advance the design of this type of facility and conduct the pre-design investigations that we would need to do to support um, the design because it's already city-owned property. If we had come up with a different design that um, was um, that required the acquisition of those other properties, uh, we wouldn't necessarily be able to advance the design because we wouldn't be able to um, conduct those pre-design investigations. So um, this is currently, uh, we don't have a, a basis of design report for this facility yet. Um, but anyway, let me run through just the layout. Flow again would just be diverted into the facility here off of 2nd Avenue um, through the screens, um, through the pumping station, and then flow through the cells. And the shells, the, the, excuse me, the cells are, um, uh, they're, they're, they're each 
individually sized. Mm -hmm. So cell one is the largest, cell two is, is a little bit smaller, and then so I'm sorry, I'm doing that backwards. Cell one is here, cell two is here, cell three is here, and cell four is here. Um, so it's a little, uh, uh, it's very differently shaped from, from the other designs, but we made it work um, according to the footprint that's available there. So it's unusual because this is the salt, uh, the salt lot where the sanitation department right now has some facilities and it's a triangular shape. So it's a challenge to fit uh, the tank and, and that's why uh, he's presenting this uh, type, type of configuration. Uh, I thought Doug said the questions at the end. We're almost there. So uh, just a very <coughs> brief summary on the CSO tank stuff. Um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the basis of design reports for the Red Hook head end and park sites were submitted to EPA just yesterday. This has a lot of reading to do. Um, we're working with PDC on the design of the superstructure architecture. And we are coordinating with the New York City Parks Department on the design of the open space at the head end site and the park site, pool park programming at the park site. Um, and obviously, meeting with EPA regularly. Um, we typically meet quarterly. Um, to uh, review design issues and, and, and discuss the We meet on staff. an as-needed basis whenever uh, you know, we think. I mean, the design right now is following a certain uh, schedule. The design, uh, let me be clear, uh, the two designs, the top and the middle, are, uh, are done under different orders, right? The top is done under a consent order that has a prescribed yeah, uh, schedule that uh, Kevin showed you before. The other one, the middle one, uh, is done under uh, a unilateral, unilateral order. Uh, so EPA has ordered uh, the city to build it. And uh, uh, it has a different schedule, which is, uh, so we intend, uh, truly, uh, we have focused, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time uh, negotiating that uh, uh, agreement, you know, the, for the top part, uh, and we have not. Uh, uh, so a lot of time was devoted in there. Uh, right now, it's EPA's intention to uh, turn on the speed <coughs> for the middle, uh, uh, for the middle, for the design of the middle canal. Okay, and we will give you a schedule as it becomes available. So Kevin, if, you're, if we're going to turn our attention to the first three phrases, why don't sure. we stop here and um, questions of clarification issues, Linda, I see you guys here so far. Two, two questions here. One, I don't understand why it's okay if the capacity of this new tank on Nevin Street overflows. Why should that sewage, sewerage be allowed to go back into the canal? That's one question. And the other is, I asked you this before, Kevin, but I don't, I didn't understand your answer. And that is, why must property be taken via eminent domain when on the other side of the street there are properties that are for sale? Okay. So I'll start with the the, uh, the, the, the first question. So, um, so we are building this tank to intercept CSO discharges that currently discharge the canal at RH 34, right? And the um, every every rain event, you know, has a different intensity and duration, and um, with the different combinations of the intensities and durations, they produce a different uh, volume. And uh, <clears throat> we EPA has actually directed us to construct an eight million gallon facility here uh, uh, at, for the for the Red Hook. Um, RH34 outfall, um, and it's it's that 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 meets the requirements of the rod, which was a 58 to 74 percent reduction in CSO volume. We're actually exceeding that um, uh, on both the solids on, and on a volume um, standpoint. We're we're actually in the in the in the 80 the high 80s. Uh, I forget what the what the number is off the top of my head. Is it, what, what is it? It's 89 percent. So. Um, we're exceeding that, and I mean, you could build the facilities as large as you want, but that's that would be similar to building highways for rush hour traffic. It's just I, you know it becomes it becomes uh, uh, very cost ineffective uh, to do so. It requires such a large amount of money to capture a very small volume. So 
This, this facility will reduce the number of uh, CSO uh, discharges from over 40 to just about six per year. So about every other month, there would be um, a discharge to the canal. So, so, we reduce, so it will capture 90% uh, of the, uh, approximately 90% of the events. So right now you have uh, like 46 or 48 of the other It's 46, right? For, okay. 46? So you have 46, or in other words, on average, in a year, the CSO up there overflows 46 times. Right, with a new design, with a tank, this tank in there, it will overflow six times, okay, approximately. In other words, the other 40 times, everything will be captured in the tanks and it will be sent to the treatment facility. Those six times, you know, the, so those six times, in other words, uh, the most intense events where we have, so we have a tank of eight million gallons, all right, and the event is a nine million gallon uh, event, okay. The tank is going to capture those eight million, and then at the end, it's not going to have any more capacity. Okay, so that will overflow. But as I mentioned during at the Wyckoff Gardens, that will be uh, cleaner water. Okay, they're not going to be uh, because most most of uh, of, of the uh, pathogen, you know, the sewage and, and, and the oils uh, are washed off at the beginning of of the, of the storage. All right. So I think it's a uh, and that, so the reason is because the tanks do not have, you know, you have 10 million gallon event, you cannot hold it, okay? Uh, so they have built the tank in, in accordance with uh, the record decision. And uh, as uh, uh, Kevin said, the capacity of the tank uh, exceeds the requirements of the record decision. Any other part the of the question? question. And, the, and, and the second question, so, um, we, we feel that this is the best location for the construction of the Red Hook tank because of its proximity to the existing uh, RH-034 uh, regulator and our existing facilities. That's the Kiwanis pumping station and uh, the Kiwanis flushing tunnel. Um, there is a significant amount of work that, would, that is required to divert that flow. These influent channels and these, the bypass chamber, these are very, very large conduits. Um, and in order to you know, uh, convey that flow to another location, even the park, um, is going to be very difficult, uh, uh, expensive, um, and very intrusive and disruptive type of work. Um, I mean, basically, we'd have to close down streets for, for quite some time. Um, you know, I, I've been driving around this neighborhood for, for quite some time, and, you know, the work required for the high-level storm sewer project, for example, which are very small sewers. These are very shallow, very small sewers is very uh, intrusive on the neighborhood. They've had to knock down trees, they've had to relocate um, all the existing utilities, uh, gas lines, that sort of thing. It's very, very intrusive work. And so what we're trying to do is to stay out of the streets. You know, we're trying to stay between the canal and Nevin Street. And that's why we think that this site is, you know, makes the most sense. Um, I said it earlier today, we've said it in the past, and I'll say it again, it's the city's preference um, to, to acquire these properties uh, in a willing seller, willing buyer transaction. We, the city has already made um, offers to uh, the two property owners. We're waiting counter offers. Um, so that's that's the city's preferred approach at this point. Uh, I would like to disagree. Uh, I'll, I'll, we're going we're we're to go in order here. He's, uh, he's the owner. That's right. He's oh, I'm the owner of the property. Oh, OK. Then. So, so he, I'm going to go here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and what Sorry. I hear DEP say is, they want to do this and they want to do that, and this is the best interest, but I have not been approached on any level as far as relocation of my employees, my workers, my tenants, the 501C charity that's there, spoke the hub. The DEP hasn't been done anything. Uh, I do have a lawyer on the case where they've had minimal conversation about offering properties, but they are not taking into consideration brownfields that we're not allowed to enter because it's declared a super fun site. They're also not taking into consideration <coughs> the zonings of the neighborhood. So their offers are just non-existent right now as far as I'm concerned, and I'm the owner. And I speak at probably on behalf of the other two owners are, are also. Is it, I, so we have made an offer and we are awaiting a counter offer. Right? That's, that's where we stand right now? No, you ha I haven't received any offers. I have not okay. received any offers. Okay, we'll take that back. So, 
And just for clarity for the CAG, if you can help clear, clear that up as you move forward too, because otherwise these things end up just hanging here as the last known knowledge. Sure. Uh, I think so, that, that, that was a good clarification. Yeah. So. Yeah. so so if, if there's yeah, what the status of the offer is, and we'd love to have you back and let us know what's going on from your end. I, I think it was very clear with the status. So I think he yeah. has not received an offer. That's right. Okay, okay. so I think that's fine. Right, but, so, but Kevin, Kevin is not the one who's making the offers, he's the engineer. So, that's right, that's right. So, so, so as we move down the road, we just want to kind of keep up to date. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. The, only, the only thing that we've received is a letter stating that they intend to make an offer and they intend to acquire the property. That we've got. Okay. Thank you both. Okay, I have a question. I've asked Chris does. Oh, me? And he couldn't, I asked you prior and you couldn't answer because it was a city action. Um, I was st surprised that in the August um, uh, uh, Planning Commission design presentation, there was no presentation for the park, park site that we were understood there was supposed to be parallel. You said the um, Design Commission is supposed to see, oversee all um, property work being done on public property. So when is the Design Commission going to see the uh, park site and when are they going to see the salt lot site? So we are going to the Design Commission Design Commission, Commission, excuse me, uh, for uh, the head end site right now because we are pursuing Euler for. But the head what about the, the alternative head end site? Is We're not pursuing possible? Euler for that right now. So when will it go, and or will that be something that will be lost in the schedule? It's not something. Everything you said, everything has to go before them. When are those sites going to go and and solve the site? That's a good question. I'm making a note of it. <laughs> Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're compliant, we're, we're compliant with the order. We're compliant with the order. April 2020 and then have no design commission oversight for these other sites. They have to do it by the time it's on the critical path. However, uh, I would say that in EPA's viewpoint, there are certain um, uh, administrative city approval things that are not required under Superfund. Um, and this may be one of them, but th these are things that we've discussed in detail with the city at this point. Uh, right. As long as they are meeting our time schedules, we are not debating with them whether they are doing work which we believe may not technically be required <laughs> under Superfund. For example, something like counting trees on the first street basin. We don't believe that it's necessary to count the number of trees on the first street basin before we clean up the first street basin. The city believes that it is necessary to count trees on the first street basin. Um, that's a city requirement. If they want to do it, we're not fighting with them as long as they don't delay the completion of the design for the first street basin. So, uh, uh, if I understood, uh, so what Brian is talking about is uh, regulatory requirements. Uh, what Kevin was talking about, putting fences and signs and stuff like that. So what Brian says is that under Superfund, uh, the, the city does not have to uh, go and get <laughs> permits. You know, it, it just has to fulfill its, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the essential uh, requirements, okay, without waiting for permits. If I understand your question correctly, is what you are interested in is how, and I might be wrong in the interpretation, how the Parks Design Commission is going to shape uh, the land above the tanks. Is that what you're asking for? Well, how they're going to their oversight when it's going to be presented to them to have comment on the, the, their design. What I'm saying, design. is that your interest? What's going to look I mean. Yes, that's what Okay, the, the all right. So, okay, so that uh, we made a note. We'll discuss it with the city, with the city, and uh, but, but, we'll, the, we'll but the underlying back. issue is the one of schedule, yeah, yeah, meeting schedule. It is. It is. What I'm saying is what uh, Brian was bringing up. Yeah. Uh, it, it was. It had to do with uh, uh, regulatory issues. What you're asking for is the uh, design criteria for uh, uh, finishing up the top of, top of the tanks. Okay. Okay. So we will we'll, we'll address. Right, right. question before I came here for, um, for Chris in the previous part. Um, last night at the Borough President's um, presentation, we discussed um, 
having a conversation afterwards with some people who work at the Borough yeah. President's Office, and they are under the impression that there are financial um, penalties going to be imposed on um, the DEP if the ULERP doesn't go forward and, and, and follow through the process. It's our understanding there are no financial penalties if, in, if they don't meet these deadlines. It's just that the site reverts to the uh, question site. Is, yeah. so is it right or wrong? Are there financial penalties attached to the DEP not meeting the deadlines for their preferred tank? As you know, I stayed out of that process. Are there financial penalties you're going to impose if they don't make, meet the debt target dates for their preferred site? Um, it has been and remains EPA's preference that the tank goes in the park for financial and other reasons. We've granted the city the opportunity to acquire their preferred site under this order. Um, it is not our intention to impose penalties if they end up doing the thing that we prefer them to do in the first instance. Uh, it is technically possible that the city may fail to meet a deadline and would be responsible for penalties um, uh, for not completing, for example, the, the Hewlett process. Uh, but I don't see us imposing those penalties uh, because, as I said, we prefer that the tank not go there. Um, uh, so it's it's a purely theoretical thing, um, and uh, I, I really uh, I, I don't see it happening. Um, other than if we were to find out that the city was doing something to intentionally uh, not comply with deadlines, for example. Uh, but um, I, I don't see that type of scenario happening. So, so if they if they if they mess up, you I mean, if I understand correctly, to translate it here. So, if they mess mess up the euro and they don't meet the, the schedule, they will have to switch and go to the to to the park location. And what Brian says, we're not going to penalize them for that. It's something we suggested to begin with. So there, so there's no, 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 we're not going to impose penalties. Penalty, 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 penalty for this process. No, in fact, we believe it would save um, significant amounts of money, but it would be uh, premature to figure out at this point how much money it would save to go into the park. Um, and, um, you know, frankly, uh, I, 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 yeah. I think we've discussed it. Let, let's do it this way. At this point, we're trying to work with the city, and okay, not against the city. And, and so we're not thinking penalties. But I just wondering the borough president thought there were financial penalties. Uh, I, that, that, uh, every, e or every order uh, that I, I, as I said, which I, with, I'm not involved with that order, and I have no interest in, uh, so to speak, uh, it has a section on penalties. <coughs> but uh, really, that's not what we're looking at. We're trying to uh, advance the project. I have yeah. a lot of cards. So and, 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 and if I could just add. Our construction cost estimates for constructing the tank in the park is a lot more money than constructing at the head of the facility. So that those estimates were included in the basis of design reports that were submitted. Okay, let's not go far This is a follow-up from last night. I, I wanted to clarify if the EPA has a problem coordinating with the city about barging out excavated material from the CSO tanks. Yes. Uh, uh, as opposed so this, to this came uh, actually before I came in. I wasn't aware. Brian mentioned to me and what I heard is that it was stated in last night's meeting that uh, any excavation that will take place uh, 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 for the purpose of uh, the construction of the tank, uh, will not be allowed to be uh, moved out of the neighborhood by barges. That is incorrect. I don't know. How, I mean, that's not how, something I have stated. And so I'm saying right now publicly that uh, the material, uh, that's why we have the canal. You know, that's why they built the canal to begin with, to have transportation through it. <laughs> and, and so, uh, at least that's what my my. <laughs> Uh, and so it is not true. I mean, EPA does not oppose the, uh, 
the transport of materials, of excavated material through the canal. On, on the contrary, it, it supports. We can stay on that you want me to write uh, a letter? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm staying right now, and it's going on the record, yeah. so you can send. Uh, okay. you know, the uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about comments to the borough president before we break. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I, you I, I, another I, I, question? I, yeah, I've got two more. Um, uh, Kevin. Kevin. Um, yes. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, another truck related question um as you know i we live on the our north wall of our building is the south end of the staging area um last night it appeared that the privately owned stub end of sackett street was not include, included in the staging area that's right that's you right know, it's it's not that's so that's the right. staging area stops at the south wall of eastern Side. that's right Okay, uh, that's some small consolation. Um, third question, um, should you pivot to the park? The plan view that you had is, are the tanks still to the west of the yes. green playground area? Yes, I um, should have provided a blow up of this. It's yeah, it's it, will take, it will take the, the western part uh, of, of uh, West of the trees, where the trees are. Okay. I can show you after, but it, it, it's tiny, but it shows yes, the western two thirds, basically the western two thirds of the of the parcel. Let me and let me point out something else about it. Also, uh, if if the tank goes there, uh, and, and by the way, you know, in the record of decision, uh, I would say it was our, our idea. We put it in the record of decision, and the only place that we named as a as a potential, and then we said. We will, you know, the lo uh, location will be specified later. The only place that we had, that we were thinking about, and we had, we had named in the record decision, is that it was a park, you know, and the softball. Uh, so what I, I, I'm saying, because we had given it thought in advance, uh, and we had looked at the area, it is possible, uh, actually not is not only possible, but probably it would be necessary to use a different uh, stage and area than uh, the one, uh, than the Eastern Studios. Uh, for example, we have in mind that there's a parking, uh, there's an open space uh, south of the park. Okay, uh, uh, it's between uh, Nevins and Third Avenue, I think. You know, uh, just south of the park, there's an open space. So there's a possibility that the city, if hypothetically, okay, if they go to the, to the park, uh, that they negotiate something with the owner of the space, who actually happens to be the owner of one of the lands that uh, is uh, it will be used for the other location. So what I'm saying, if they go to the park location, they can negotiate with the owner and use that as a staging place. Okay, so that is uh, so uh, a slight difference since you brought it. Okay, sorry. Um, I think very quickly, I'll ask them both at once. Um, <coughs> the headhouse on that. Plan view. How much of the? Uh, where is it? How far back does it go? Are you going about the park side or on the park side? The head house would be how, how big? So it's basically yeah. it's over this portion of uh, the wet well and screening area, over to this uh, dividing wall between cell one and cell two. So it's about that. Um, you know, I think the next time that we come, we'll have some better. Uh, drawings to show that you can review them. We have, we have, uh, there is, a, there is an, uh, you know, they, they had uh, prepared a slide, but uh, to, to my mind, it, it did not look. Uh, it was a conceptual. It did not look realistic. Uh, uh, we, EPA, we have uh, uh, certain views about it. That uh, you know about the final, uh, you know, finalizing on how the head house is gonna, uh, you know, how big and what facilities are required to be there. And we are not at the stage yet to, we are still discussing with the city, we are not at the stage yet to present, all right. And finally, what else am I going to ask? The, um, the flushing tunnel, uh, lowering the weir to control tunnel, is that going according to the <coughs> Yes, yes, that work, that work is still planned for late winter, early spring of next year. Right. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to be pretty quick. The grit removal, grit storage and removal areas are indoors and managed entirely by odor control. Yes. 
Um, there will be no grid storage outdoors ever. That's right. Um, it would be wonderful if any of the elevated buildings could be covered with green roofs. Can you pull that off for us? Uh, yes, I think we had to look at that as part of the sustainability analysis. And, uh, green, green roofs. roofs. Green roofs. Oh. Yeah. So continue to look at that. So uh, if the space is taken uh, closer to the canal, what is the height of the tanks? Is it flush with the ground, or is it higher? It's, it's higher. How uh, it's, uh, So right now, the, the grade at Nevin Street is roughly, and please correct me if I'm wrong, folks, around plus 8. And the top of the tank, we are at approximately plus 13. So there's about a 5-foot grade difference. It's, uh, it's kind of similar to the grade difference you see at the, at the um, at the uh, Thomas Green Park right now, the western end of the uh, of the park, so it's similar to that to that grade. So it will be fun. how much taller will it be other than the ground? So it will be about, about that, that, that much for from uh, from street level. Yeah. And so what we're looking to do, what, what we're looking to do is to provide, you know, no, no, not necessarily. We are looking to provide some walkways and ramps and stairs and that sort of thing to soften that great difference between um, the sidewalk and the top of the tank. And that so, would be. But that, that's something that you'll see possibly. sometime in the short future. Yes, that would be and green. And that would be possibly. green, possibly, on top of the tank. Yes, yes. Green roofs. That would be roof. Okay, Ben. Yeah, thanks for sharing this. Um, for for the uh, salt line, um, what will the setback be there? Is it the same? No. Um, but the number is uh, off the top of my head, but it's on the order of like 20 feet. Is that right? Yeah, a narrow band. And, and yeah, we don't have we don't have that we don't have that 50 foot requirement uh, down there. Thanks. Good job. Um, this is just piggybacking on Marlene's um, and Chris was going to be talking about this 46 six um, numbers about the tank and how many times it would overflow. Yeah. And I, I just was thinking, if any new development happens, is any, in other words, is this being projected as something that will be the same, it will be 46.6 if we are up zone? And OK, all right, <laughs> that, that's, that's a good question. And that question came up uh, at uh, the WICO committee. Uh, so, uh, and Walter uh, gave an answer, but I have a more elaborate answer. Uh, because I was involved, uh, I mean, it's an engineering question, and so let me, so it will be, will take five minutes, right? The only situation, uh, so we have to work with, uh, with what we, we have. So the only situation where we had the possibility of uh, a residential uh, complex being built was the livestock, right? Because that, that is the, that, to date, that is the only place that is owned residential, right? So, uh, when we were thinking about the CSOs, uh, we thought also <coughs> what happens if, uh, uh, if the city zones more than that lot as residential and we have 10 light stones, so to speak, all right? So that, that came into our thinking. And, but, uh, and so, what we did, there is, uh, Ryan and I, we have inserted some language in the record decision, correct me if I'm wrong, that... Never. <laughs> uh, Rarely. Okay, that, 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 that anticipates, that anticipates uh, uh, actions for development, okay? So we have it in there to give us the power to, to, have, to, to, to have a power to negotiate in the future or to uh, direct in the future uh, what to be done with, uh, when development occurs, all right? So our example is Lightstone. So yeah, for Lightstone, uh, the first thing that we, we asked, so my first thought was, uh, so you have to build <coughs> also another ground line for your own suits. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that was a quick, uh, I mean, the intuitive thing to do. Uh, for stormwater, no, sorry. For their own sewage. For, for their own sewage. For yeah. On-site For for sanitary. For gray water. Gray water. Yeah. 
So, so I, I, I was, I was talking black. So, uh, let's not get into. Yeah, let's keep going. Yeah, let's keep going. Uh, so that that was my first uh, approach. Uh, I was told uh, because we have to deal also, you know, uh, so I was getting comment from other agencies, uh, uh, city and state, and uh, at the time I was under the impression that, uh, and I still haven't clarified it, that individual developments could not use underground uh, storage tanks for sewage, okay? I'm, I'm not sure if, it, you know, uh, we will look into that. So what we did in the Lightstone uh, case, we asked them to give us a, uh, an accounting of where water goes, okay? So what, you have a building, the Lightstone building, that collects water on the roof, that comes out of the city, and then you have, uh, next to Lightstone, you have streets that, uh, uh, where uh, storm water runs and into the canal. So what we wanted to make sure is that <coughs> the water that goes from Lightstone, okay, into the Bond Street sewer does not add to the value of the sewer. To the what? The value of the, the sewer. In other words, does not have yeah. an additional impact, okay? And so, if what went there was uh, sewage, but, it didn't, but at the same time, okay, so they took their sanitary water, right? In other words, water with sewage, with sewage, and it went in there, but at the same time, in their design, they took out water from the sewer by, that's a lie? Hmm? Well, I, we might have, uh, okay, I, I'm not. All right. All right. I'm talking about calculations right now, right? So yeah, calculations, they put something down because they could claim they had a roof. Okay, let's say, let's I'm say, a, I'm a let's say, say here, right? let's let's call material balance. So, yeah. I mean, so what I'm saying is, what I'm saying, I'm not saying that everything that we do is 100% proof, right? But at the same time, at that time, I, I look at the calculations and it seemed to me, I mean, not the same way. I look at the numbers, and it was not adding to the load of, of the sewers, okay? Because they were taking water out. Just a minute. They were taking water out, and then we required Lightstone to install an oil water separator at the end of the canal, okay? So they, they have an oil water separator in there that separates the, the, store, the, the oil from the storm water. So this, this is what we plan to do, and we will try to articulate it better for future development, because I'm not going to be around the whole time that this is going to be. So we will articulate in documentation, and so that, uh, so it's a, it's a good comment. And, and so the requirement from developers, in accordance with the record of decisions, that says that they should not be adding to the load of the sewer, okay? So developers will be required one way or another to, uh, to do that. Uh, and, and then submit that to EPA. And, and, you know, if when you say um, should, I'm just wondering, do you mean there would, it would be illegal or should? I'm just no. curious. Would there be no, no, they, they, would, they would be required because as part of the, of, of the, okay. of the, of the decision. Okay? Uh, um, and, and so what, what I said, you know, to make it again, so for every development, because it was said by some member of, of uh, a group, the group Fury up there, I mean, it was a very good comment, and it said, well, if they put downstream from us, or you have one of housing and white up there, and if they put uh, seven, you know, I don't know, 10 developments with 7,000 apartments in there, of they, it will be biking up, which is true, yeah. okay? So what we are saying is, what we will try to do, and we did it maybe perfectly, I don't know, if you have data, let me know, because what I looked at was adding correctly. So, uh, so what we will ask is, I'll try to make it a little simpler, all right? So let's say that they generate uh, a thousand gallons of uh, sewage per, uh, per month, okay? Let, let's say, okay? Uh, sewage and water. And then in that month, there are uh, 5,000 gallons of uh, storm water, okay, that, uh, uh, that can end up uh, either, in, either in the sewer or in the canal, right? So we, what we tell them 
if you take uh, 1,000, okay, if you take 1,000 gallons out of this 5,000, right, and you treat it, and you send it into the water, then you can add your 1,000 into the same base You understand? But actually, the numbers were more dramatic, you know. Uh, in other words, they were taking out of the system as water more than they were adding as sewage. So the sewage cannot go to the canal. It will go to the treatment plant. <coughs> so that, so we, maybe it sounds a little complicated. I will try to explain at other meetings uh, uh, also. But it is our intention for that not to happen, you know, for developments not to cause uh, a problem to uh, existing to housing uh, in the neighborhood. And we will try to codify, you know, to, uh, to put it in a document in, a, in an articulate way uh, and uh, hopefully in an enforceable way. A uh, couple of things. Um, in doing so, we try to, we incorporated by reference the city standards. Uh, the city requires uh, major developers to go through a process to calculate this. Um, uh, I think part of the problem is the complexity of all this <laughs> as people incrementally add uh, housing and whatnot to the neighborhood at a level that's below Atlantic Yards and things like that. That's not necessarily going through that same level of review. Uh, so we need to make sure that there's enough of a uh, sort of a, a safety um, uh, zone built into the things that we're doing. Um, and overall, there are steps to separate uh, the, the sewer lines uh, from the stormwater, from the sanitary, uh, but um, you know the the water, the sewer shed is thousands of acres that covers this area, and our focus is is mainly right next to the canal. Well, there's and no sewer shed for most of those lots. Most of the lots guys, guys, no. we don't want to do it online. It's, it's a on. very complicated issue, and it it may be something that is beyond the ability of us to review as the uh, zoning and everything else changes. We've tried to build in a mechanism to do that, yes. um, and we will find out whether it works. And if it doesn't work, we will have to all address this as a community. So we do it on, uh, right now, case by case basis, because we had one case, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so, but we're going to Okay. Try to build a mechanism okay. to do it for that. I want to move us beyond this issue here because can I just, add one just thing? keep going down rabbit hole. The city already has a very aggressive stormwater retention policy for any new developments. They have to reduce stormwater discharges that would otherwise normally occur by 90%. So when they have to do that by the installation of, of green roofs, blue roofs, um, great water systems, underground storage tanks. This is for stormwater. I'm not talking about sewage. That is already in the, in the city code, and they have to prepare that analysis and plan and submit it to uh, the DEP's Bureau of Water and Sewer Operations in order to get a sewer connection permit. So all that work has to occur um, uh, in order to, to hook up to the sewers. Do you know what part of the code that is? This is an issue unto itself, guys. We're not, let's, if we want to have a whole meeting devoted to this, we can discuss that. But tonight, we just need to keep moving. Gotcha. Jerry. Oh. <laughs> um, presentation at the borough president's hearing last night. Is this the same presentation that was made there last night? Yeah. It's a little bit different. The content is different. The purpose is different. Can you explain that? Um, well, I mean, here we're I mean, like, I, I, here I, we were I, asked I, to give a give I a conceptual conceptual we, know, for instance, if there's something that was shown on the green roof in the park, in the parks, or the green area last night that was not included here. Yes. It was, Specifically. Yes, it was one slide that we were asked not to share tonight. Yeah. So uh, it, it was constant. Yeah. I, I, I asked them. Uh, so they. I asked uh, New York City. Hey guys, come on. So I asked New York City to show uh, a presentation of the extent of the work that they are doing, and and I looked at it and, and I asked them to submit it to me. Uh, so that I, I see uh, you know, what they were showing there. So they submitted to me, and, and it did not have a lot of the detail that's in here, but I thought it, was, it would be helpful uh, for the community to see how much work has, you know, the city is doing on this, okay? the city with us. Okay? And so 
And that was the intention, I'm sorry, that is the reason why this presentation is uh, much different than the one uh, last night. With regard to the particular slide uh, that uh, you mentioned with the green, uh, I, I felt that it did not, it was really, if you remember, and if I remember, uh, it said conceptual, okay? And I don't want to discuss conceptual, I felt that we were going back to old discussions. Uh, things were not, uh, because it was conceptual, were, this, this is true to reality, that, that slide, and so it was my uh, intervention to remove that slide because it would, uh, it, it would create misconceptions. The okay, conceptual so slide, you create no, misconceptions. I, I just wanted to get that out there. Okay. Um, on the salt lot, and the work you're doing there, and the design you've done, um, will the permanent sanitation be thrown off that spot when you're finished? Will they have any any place to store their salt after you guys are done? <coughs> and kind of the same question, will there be a green roof on that with public access? Second part of that. Right, so uh, right now the plan would be to acquire the properties adjacent to uh, the salt lot. Those are, they're privately owned. So basically to acquire that entire peninsula and that would give us enough room to construct a tank, uh, relocate sanitation temporarily and, and, and permanently, and have everybody you know living there, and, and provide staging area to support the construction of that tank, um, and have everybody back cohabitating following construction. So that would be the tank, Juanes Canal Conservancy, and uh, the Department of Sanitation. Thank you, Mary Ann. Um, Is that um, the salt lot going to be? Is it going to be, uh, is it gonna start building that retention tank soon versus before the, the canal? No, it would follow uh, the construction of, of, of this facility. So, so the design is the design is slightly behind the design of the Red Hook facilities. Um, one of the reasons for that is we we are in the process of procuring. Um, a planning and design. Well, most of the planning is being done under the existing um, contract that we have, but we have to we have to procure a separate contract um, for uh, the detailed um, design. So that is that is currently ongoing. Um, but you know the the facility planning and the basis of design development um, that that you know that process that we do with our uh, partner bureau, the operating bureau, the Bureau of Wastewater Treatment. That is occurring at the same time as it's occurring for the head end facility. So this, you know, the designs are very similar, even though you know the arrangement is different. You know, the types of equipment we're using, the philosophy behind the design is very similar. Um, so it's going to be after that. Yes, that that's the intention. So then the second thing is that you said something about three hundred open three hundred sixty five days, twenty four seven. That's the odor control system, right? That would be running, right? So. How many people operating that? It's, it's technically an unmanned facility, so there's nobody that's there full time. Um, uh, so there would be no training or job opportunities for the community to. Well, we, we have, uh, we have um, sewage treatment workers and electricians and uh, plumbers, and uh, um, there's a couple other titles that you, know, you may not recognize. Um, but they work for the Bureau of Wastewater Treatment. Um, Would there be they, opportunities for? They're hiring now, so they're always hiring. <laughs> they're always hiring. <laughs> they're, they're, you know, it's a civil service exam. Yeah, but for the local community, for, for training, yeah. there's a civil service process that's required that, that that must be followed. You know, people must. You know, if you want to become a city worker, you've got to take an exam. I've, I had to take an exam, and you know, be called off a list to become a permanent city employee. It's, it's a similar process. There's before we go, I, I want a promise that there will be no more delays. Because last time, <coughs> the last time we we had a delay because we had to save Thomas Green Park, okay? And then now it's the, the, there's this this little underlying innocent thing going on about saving the facade of this building, and then now. Uh, it, it, in the process of maybe being landmarked and so forth. And, and I don't want the city or state to take that opportunity to find excuse to delay the process of, of the cleanup. 
and, 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 and building of the grid. No, no, there will be no delay. I mean, the, about the building is very clear. I think. Yeah, it just seems so okay. No, 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 no. Okay. Let, me, let me clear. It's, it's very clear. <laughs> EPA will make a determination based on input from the state and, and from the city uh, whether it's uh, preservable or not, you know, for the purpose of Superfund. And then we, it will be clear. There's no, and this is, will be done within the schedule. So there's, that doesn't present any. Guys, if we have any hope of getting out of here in time, I need quicker questions. Lewis? All right. <coughs> Some quick questions. Are you treating uh, bacteriologicals at, at these three locations? No, that's not the intention right now. So disinfection um, is currently not a requirement in the design of the facility, but we are, uh, let's see, let me put it, we, we are preparing, preparing the designs for the potential for those disinfection facilities to be added in the future. So that's be, it, it's, it's been contemplated in the design. So the, any overflows would be untreated? That's right. Under the long-term control plan, uh, the city has made the conclusion that the tanks are not necessary at all uh, to comply with the Clean Water Act. So uh, the CSO tanks will be providing um, massive amounts of essentially treatment by capturing all of that material. Um, so. Uh, treatment of the tiny amounts of incremental overflow um, is um, sort of uh, on top of, on top of. We don't, we don't think it will be necessary. And it, uh, it's the same comment that uh, Kevin made about the size. After a certain size, you have diminishing returns. So uh, at, at this point, it's not being contemplated. It, it was a quick question. Yeah, my fault. Yeah, no, it's a quick answer. <laughs> so, I, I can't promise you that. <laughs> All right, so what is the, uh, what is the life expectancy of the facility? That's a good question. Um, I would say, you know, structures, we typically say 50 years for mechanical equipment. It's anywhere from 5 to 20, um, depending on the piece of equipment. Right, so, right. like pump, so, no, so, so, first. Okay. You're talking about equipment. Well, what's it for structure? 50 years. For equipment, anywhere from five to twenty. So, you know, pump replacement cycles. You know, that depends on the type of pump and that sort of thing. And you know, we, we replace pumps all the time. You know, that could be could be a year, could be five years, it could be ten years. It all depends on, on the type of pump and the type of service it's it, it's in. You know, piping is something on the order of you know 20, 25 years, something like that. Right. So, and, and I'm not going to ask you about the cost because obviously it's still in the process of evaluations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Where is the money coming from? Water and sewer rates. So in other words, the rates will go up citywide to take care of the cost of the project. Yes, potentially. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I would just say that that's hard to say directly if the rates will directly go up or not. We've had it in the instance in the past, we've had increases related relative to mandates. Um, we've also been done a really good job in recent years of trying to balance that out a bit and trying to give some savings back. So I would, it's not fair to say exactly what, the, what this cost would do to the rates, but there would be some adjustment, of course. Is that it? Brad. Yeah, this is a question uh, for DEP, and that's in the scoping document that came out of the scoping process over the summer. Um, I noticed that there were a bunch of different regulatory agencies that were listed as sort of agencies to or departments to liaise with, and I didn't notice that the Landmarks Preservation Commission was there. Are they currently working with you? Because I know there is an o two official requests being considered by them right now. Yes, with respect if, it, to the if, if they weren't specifically listed, you know, it was just an oversight, or we might have just been given examples of the type of agencies. But yes, we are. We have met with them okay. um, in the past, and. Um, there, there's a lot of active conversations uh, ongoing right now with regards to 234 Public Street. Okay, thanks. And then the second question is for the EPA team, and that's just, when will the Section 106 process and or NEPA process required under federal law, when will that get underway? It is underway right now. I mean, the, the reviews, yeah, are you talking with regard to, to the building? Or? Uh, with respect to consultation meetings for anyone who's consulting party under section 106. Um, all right, so uh, um, the uh, MOU for the consulting parties and, and SHPO um, 
that's still in process. That's not advanced as quickly as uh, we would have liked. However, um, that um, will be in place in the coming months, we hope. Um, in the meantime, we are nonetheless um, doing all the <coughs> same evaluations that we need to do under 106, and we are open to any input, and we're certainly following along on these issues. Uh, so um, uh, in the absence of that agreement, there's not a fundamental difference in um, uh, how, how the process has worked. Uh, we still hear, hear your concerns. Uh, we're still having them evaluated. We're still talking with SHPO and waiting to hear from Landmarks Commission. And um, uh, you know we are literally, you know, years away from something actually uh, being taken down or anything like that. So the process is underway. It's just that uh, the memorandum of understanding that he referred to is not in place because of uh, different comments and so on. But the, pro the, the process is in place. I mean, we are receiving letters, we are considering them, we are asking for the opinion of the uh, you know, city agencies and of our archaeologists, so that's in place. Okay, it's, it's proceeding. Can I ask a follow-up to that? Go ahead. Is, uh, do you consider the Butler Street site um, under Section 106, uh, since it's a city action, but it's required? It's a federal action. Bed? If, if, they, if they're going to move forward on that site, it's a federal action, and we'll make that determination. It, it's a potential, okay? I mean, it's potential, potential right? Yeah. yeah. Linda, last question on this. Well, I'd like to know how you, or what your method um, is for determining the safety of uh, adults and children uh, using the park at these sites. Isn't there a danger, and why is it why is it okay to uh, be so close to the canal when there are no barriers that I've seen yeah. from the, where the tanks are and the roof to the canal? Um, I, I'm not sure if I completely understand the question, but let me try. So, so looking at the plan view again, you know, this tank. This is all below ground here. There is an above ground structure, a building, a physical building here that will contain all the equipment. Um, and, but there will be a roof over um, these below ground cells of the tank. And then, you know, we do expect, you know, some sort of promenade here along the canal, so along the canal, but upland between the canal and um, the below ground portion of the tank. Um, you know, there would be a railing right. along the canal. Like uh, the last one. I'm, I'm not sure if I... Yeah, so... I, I, you're, the I'm tank is fully contained. It's, it's, it's a building. Yeah, there will be a railing. That. That's not my There will be a railing. That, that's what you said. There will be a railing. Like what, what are the safety concerns? What are the safety concerns? How have they been... How have you looked at that? During construction? Is that what you mean? Yeah. So, uh, so, Linda, we... Uh, we are not that far. Yes. Okay, we haven't looked at the, the landscaping. But, but that's, on the part, that's part of the process. Uh, it is part of the process, but we are not at that part. I understand, but where, how will you then in the future? We hear it. We, we, we hear you, and it, there will be something we'll be okay. discussed in, in future meetings. But this is a very long process. Okay, so we are not at that part. Right. But okay. it's a good okay. First three turn, basically. Okay. Um, okay. Just one last Go ahead, hurry. There's going to be a process where you're going to have final designs for what will be viewable to the community. Yes. Yeah. Are you going to have any community visioning on what they're going, what the possibilities are, what they're going to look like? Wait, wait, wait. All right. So we want to be transparent with you, and we showed you designs right now just to see that we are in discussions with uh, uh, the city, okay? As I said, we still, we, EPA, still have uh, certain questions and comments on what we saw here. So when we finalize the design, uh, or before we, you know, we, we get the process, we have like 65, uh, what are the percentages? You have different percentages. 30, 60, 90. Okay. So let's say we're at the 60% design, all right? And at that point, 
there will be an agreement as the, at the 60%. Okay, that, that's that's where we, how we go. At that point, we're going to present to you, you know, what we have. And uh, yeah, like with everything else, we're going to show you exactly how the project evolves. Right. Um, on top of that, the um, sort of right. authorization process for all this work that's going on in the various city forums is an opportunity for you to comment publicly on what the city is proposing to do before they even get to EPA so that if there are, are issues about public access or historic preservation or whatever your concerns may be, uh, it is your opportunity to go to the appropriate uh, government agency, city council, or whoever it is, and express your views. And if those are adopted as conditions for the city moving forward, then that's part of the city's process. So you have actually several bites at the apple here. So if you believe that the approval should be done uh, for the tank to be built next to the canal, but that it should have certain qualities to it, whatever those may be, uh, a helicopter landing pad or I don't know what, um, you can go and advocate, advocate those things. And if your comments are adopted as conditions for the city to move forward, then the DEP will incorporate those into their design as part of that approval. Then when they get to us moving forward with their design, we independently will be reviewing what we need to do to make sure that the design complies with uh, all the requirements that EPA believes uh, applies to that. By that time, okay. Brian will be the project manager. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. First Street Turning Basin. Okay, First Street Turning Basin. Uh, so also included in the record of decision in order to uh, New York City, uh, was a requirement to restore the former First Street Turning Basin. Um, this work is currently being designed by the New York City Department of Design and Construction, and I'm just providing um, this update on their behalf at this point because I'm a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, a lot of the work that's been taking recently has to do with pre-design investigation work going out there. Um, so I just wanted to review some of the pre-design investigation activities that have been completed recently. Um, inspections of the underwater bulkheads in the canal, it was done uh, back in the spring. Multi-thing sounding survey, um, adjacent buildings research and inspections, you know, so some of that is a desktop uh, uh, study. Some of it is actually going out and, and surveying the buildings. Topographical survey, uh, September through October. Environmental sampling and analysis and geotechnical uh, exploration. These were actual borings um, that we've taken. And uh, Brian's favorite tree survey uh, <laughs> uh, took place in July. Um, and all of those subsurface activities were conducted in accordance with the archaeological monitoring plan that was submitted to, submitted to and approved by EPA. Um, Soil sampling and results summary, um, there were eight borings installed and uh, we did chemical analysis of uh, 19 field samples. Um, as is expected, the site is filled with uh, um, soil, but also a lot of debris. We encountered um, you know, steel and boulders and uh, even some drums. Um, the soil and fill contains varying levels of SVOCs, PCBs, metals, um, all above. Um, New York State DEC commercial use soil cleanup objectives. There's really no surprise there, to be perfectly honest. Um, and we did find um, some evidence of some some uh, some napple in uh, several of the uh, of the borings, SB one, two, three, and four. Uh, groundwater sampling and results. Um, we installed three shallow and three deeper groundwater wells, and we collected and analyzed six groundwater samples. Um, again, uh, no. No surprise that we did find some apple uh, identified in one of the wells. And we also conducted permeability testing um, to determine if um, we, can, can, we can perform the restoration work. That's really the excavation work in the wet or in the dry. Um, this is just a, a little site plan showing the location of the borings that we, that, that we took and the borings um, where we did um, find some, some pure products on apple. There were several. Uh, so what's going on right now? Um, there are uh, 
We've uh, prepared several engineering evaluations uh, and, and design alternatives analyses on um, new bulkhead uh, designs. They were submitted to EPA and there's been some back and forth um, very, very recently, as, as recently as the last couple of weeks, and um, as well as uh, the size and configuration of the basin. Um, and then, just again, just to, re just to review the current design and plan, is a removal of soil and buried sediment buried sediment to the same elevation as uh, the main canal after it is dredged and capped, so it will be a consistent bottom. Um, installation of a cap at, on the exposed surface at the excavation bottom, and installation of a 20-foot wide wetland shelf along the northern and eastern sides of the restored basin. I believe none of that should be a surprise at this point. That's it. Is the results online? Yeah, at the archaeological survey? Uh, all of the field reports were submitted to EPA, I believe, at this point. Um, I don't think there was any. Nothing was found. Right uh, on the archaeological side of things. They were the trenches were not okay. So you have to realize that uh, the, there was a basin there and it was filled, okay, with junk. So uh, everything and it was filled uh, in the last 50 years, 60 years, something like that, right? So it's filled. Uh, anything of archaeological importance that we anticipate to find, it will be when we go deeper, okay, into the native sediment. So nothing of archaeological importance was found. Yeah, the only sub subsurface excavation had was with the borings and some test pits, which is, you know, a couple no. Yeah. Brad? Do the designs for the new bulkheads contain any means of safe exit for a person who would fall into the water from land or from a water, watercraft? So, so let, let, let me put, I, the same question was put by somebody right. in your organization. And I think Walter told him not to follow yeah, you, away from here, something right. like that. So <laughs> this is, he basically wrote a letter in response. Okay. So, yeah. so they, uh, you have to understand that this is uh, surrounded by private properties. So there will be really no access, uh, public access, other than by water, you know, by uh, canoe. Right. So the, it's not an issue, really. Right. I mean, I guess I would say, as someone who participated in the recent city planning process for the neighborhood, there was a good deal of discussion about providing some means of access to that. Uh, that's a local. Water. That's a local issue, which we encourage uh, the conservancy and the dredgers and uh, to work with the NRD people. Who will have funding to potentially right, but uh, the acquisition, and we support that fully. So the access we a we asked the certain owners. Okay, we we asked, for example, personally, I asked the powerhouse, mm -hmm. you know, to to grant some uh, part of their land for access. They are going to win to do that. Okay, so uh, I don't know if we have asked the, the other owner, but as it is right now, there will not be there will be no access. All right, it will be a new water body. Uh, with a shelf, and all these are in uh, our response to uh, community's desires. We get to have the new water body there reopened. Uh, the shelf, the same thing, you know, we listen to the conservancy and others. To, to uh, so with regard to the uh, the safety, I, I don't think it's a safety, I mean, we have buckets. I mean, uh, the answer is no, we're not going to be providing ladders, you know, in every bucket that we do. Um, the, as rezoning occurs, and people fall under the waterfront um, uh, guidelines for having esplanades and whatnot, um, the approval process for every single property can incorporate those type of um, comments and, and requirements uh, from the city and the public so that uh, the property that's uh, next to the Carroll Street Bridge, uh, if that gets rezoned and they put something there, there's an esplanade and the esplanade has, uh, for example, uh, another uh, public access uh, spot like you have at um, uh, at uh, uh, for the dredgers uh, at Lights Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll just I'll just finish up by saying that the reason we're we're talking about this is because this is about planning for the future, and that's what this whole exercise of cleaning up the canal is about. And so we think if the EPA is going to have standards that it imposes on anyone who's putting in a new bulkhead along the canal adding in a minimal requirement that there be a very basic ladder, just like the ladder that's in the 4th Street Basin right now for the workers who, if, if they were to fall off the barge, 
they not have a means of access or egress, rather. Um, That's um, all we're asking. Uh, we uh, well, I, I, I recognize your, your interest, um, and um, we are working with property owners to um, address those uh, things on a voluntary basis. Um, it's not within the scope of our regulations to impose them. Um, and we hope to work with the CAG and the property owners and the city as they, as they address these prop properties. Uh, I think in most cases, those are things which can be added on uh, even after the fact. Um, uh, not everything about bulkheads can be added on after the fact, but some of that stuff uh, can be done when the sort of permanent redevelopment of the property occurs. Linda, I'm from Peter here. Took a photograph of the um, CSO on Carroll Street that looked like it collapsed yesterday. Does anybody know one? Um, anyone know why? Uh, I have seen the photograph. Uh, what part of, of Carroll Street? If you can share, we you know we can what? we can certainly yeah. investigate. Yeah. What, what, what part of Carroll Street? Right on Carroll Street. The old. <coughs> <laughs> the brick. The brick yeah. is, uh, has well, collapsed. The, the bricks have collapsed. Photographer, clarify. <laughs> um, <laughs> The construction to have the stormwater runoff. Originally, we were led, collectively led to believe that the the old brick orifice would be preserved, and for whatever reason, it appears that it's well, it's definitely been dismantled. I'm not privy to whether they're planning to put it back as it was. We, we can get an update on that and, and, and report back. So we'll, we'll find out. We'll let you know. All right. This is the last. Thank you, Kevin, for well, your sure. presentation and your forbearance.